So, with The Walking Dead, the final season about to come, here are my expectations, excuse me, for the final season. I'm a huge fan of The Walking Dead game by Telltale Games. It's one of the best series that they got on there right now. They all have their ups and downs to a good degree. The final season seems to be something that we're going to be excited about. And the fact that it's four episodes long, if they're going to make a four episodes instead of, instead of the traditional five, they better make these episodes pretty long and pretty satisfying if you ask me. But what are my expectations? What are my thoughts on what's going to happen in the final season? Well, here, well, when it comes to a final season, the first thing that pops up in my mind is, is conclusion. You gotta have a satisfying conclusion. I now I know there's probably gonna be an ending where this character dies and this character dies if you don't do this or do that, and it'll affect this. It'll affect this ending in some way. That's probably the reason why they cut it down to four episodes so that you can make their choice, make our choices a bit more meaningful and not be dragged down to a good degree. I don't know. Now, I know there's probably gonna be an ending where Clementine's gonna die, but if Clementine's gonna die in the in, in the end, if, there, if that's even the choice. Um, they better, uh, <clears throat> they better, like, give it in a way that is totally in her character and it's going to, I don't know, be somewhat satisfying. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I do want to see a satisfying conclusion, depending on the endings we're going to, we're going to get. Because, uh, Telltale is really liking the idea of multiple ways you can end your game. They did it with The Walking Dead Season 2. Which they could have ended the Clem story right there, honestly, because it would have been way open ended on what you can do, all that, all, all that stuff. It just would have been a better, satisfying way to end Clem's story, honestly. Even though she's been through so much shit, like, like especially in season two, like she, she, just, damn son. Season now, season four, the fall season, they better make it conclusional because that shit, just they, they gotta, they gotta do something to resolve the story. Like I say. I don't know. This is this is this is since this is far into the apocalypse, uh, which pretty much Clementine is about, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, an, an adult at this point. We're more than likely gonna be uh, getting, like, you know, it's been like more likely like pretty much a decade since since the apocalypse have happened. There's gotta have, there's gotta be like some sort of cure at this point, or some semblance sem semblance of a cure, like like by episode one. There's this cure, and they kind of go a bit more, you know, into that, and it's like a conflict over that, and we do all what we, we, we can and all that stuff. I'm, I mean, hey, what if there's gonna be an ending where we can, literally, you know, cure all of humanity, unite, unite everyone, and cure er, er, everyone, and we continue on, onward on that. Who knows? Like, I don't freaking know. That that'd be kind of cool way to end the series, honestly. Even though it's uh. In the same universe as the the comics, which would be kind of conflicting, but who the hell knows? But honestly, just like I was saying, I just want a satisfying conclusion in some way, shape, or form. I feel like they should go, they should go down the route of a cure because you know it's a final season. You gotta make it cl cl climactic and all that stuff. Don't wait, don't wait until the comics does that does that shit. I mean, I'm sure the com comics is gonna do that, like as as its final arc or something. But have some sort of hint to that, and it'll, you know, like come on, like if you, like Telltale, you're the ones doing the damn story. You don't always have to to where the comics has to do it. Just do it the way you want. And I feel like they should conclude it in a way that they should conclude. So regardless how they're going to end it, I just hope they do end it with a satisfying conclusion. And since it is the final season, here's my second expectation. Resolution and wrapping up everything. I mean, I'm telling y'all, like, we, there's a lot of questions. There is a lot of questions that are un, left unanswered throughout the whole series. It, it's on a level, level of bleach on answer questions. I'm not kidding about that. Like, there's so many unanswered questions of bleach. I'm pretty sure it's probably up Walking Dead's telltales, like up there, because th there's so many unanswered questions to what happened to certain characters, what was currently was currently going on with 
all these other P P people, like the 400 Days characters they introduced, which which depending on what you do in the 400 Days DLC, they, they can show up in Season 2 as brief cameos. What happened to them? Um, like, what happened to Lily? What happened to Crystal? What happened to Crystal's Chris, baby? What happened to... Like, there's so many unanswered questions by Season 2 alone, it's not even funny. Like, you're kind of wondering why they even do a new Frontier, honestly. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a new Frontier. I do like it to a good degree, but if it was its own game, I feel like it would have been fine. But, the fact that it's in the same storyline, and the fact that it's got a Clement Nick continuing from where Season 2 left off, and depending on your en en ending, it just blows my damn mind. And, like, they did not bother answering any questions that we had in the third season. They just went along with the story, and it's just kind of making Clementine's appearance throughout the most of the season kind of pointless, other than figuring out, oh, what did she, oh, what happened after, you know, this ending in season two, and, oh, okay, she, she actually is an important part to how you get your ending, and, you know, the endings in season, in season three. So she wasn't all pointless of putting the game to begin with, and she and, and she did have a good amount of screen time and kind of coolness in it. But honestly, it just just come on. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I, I really like a new Front Frontier a whole whole bunch, but seriously, like if you really just cut er, er, everything from a new Front and Frontier and only just put, and only just count the shit that Clementine's involved in. That's that's pretty much all you really need to know, and uh, by the time you get to the final season, because it, it's some time after the events of, new, of a new front and frontier, and it's been kind of it's been confirmed that the Garcias are not gonna be in, in in the game, and like someone making a return, I just don't understand. I just had to, I just had to sh I just had to say that real quick because season three did not answer any questions other than like what did Clementine do afterwards. I'm not. I'm not even kidding about that, and it just it just man. So if your episodes are gonna be longer than usual, try to like hint at things of what happened to certain characters, depending on what you did. Because Telltale's been doing a good job with uh, transferring your choices from certain for like continuing your actual story. Like if if things from a new front and front are gonna come straight into season four. They better do it pretty well because that you, you can't just make a new frontier pointless. You just can't. You made it for a reason. Oh my god! I just had it throw right there. But like I said, I want resolution to what's been going on. Answer most of our unanswered questions. What happened to certain characters? Like we haven't seen Ma Molly since season one. Like what's going on with her? Probably you know. What happened to Chris at the end, of, like during season two, and and apparently there's a, there's a tweet that said by Telltale themselves, like it was like, like uh, and it was like after a after a con convention or something like that, and he said we didn't forget about Krista. She's coming back, and we better have and and, 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 and when she does, we better have flashbacks to the time before they end up getting separated. Cause that's pretty much what we needed. As there was a huge time jump after the beginning, the first scene in season two, like come on, bro. So they better redeem that shit because I don't really like the fact that they did time jump that damn far. It just, it, it, it just didn't, it just didn't, it just didn't work. It just didn't really, it didn't really work to a good degree. I just feel like they should have just kept it the way they were going with it. I mean, they just kind of should have kept it to where we're continuing where we left off. I mean, it's a much better route in terms of writing, honestly. So yeah, Krista, she's more likely coming back. Whole, this is the final season. They, she better, unless they write her off as like, oh, she's been a walker. That's gonna piss me off, man. <laughs> so yeah, resolution to all the characters, like what happened to Lily. I mean, people have been asking on whether or not she's gonna come back or not. People were wanting her to come back in season two. People have wanted her to come back for a while, and I heard. And I heard that Telltale is interested in bringing Lil Lily back, so I'm hoping for her to come back in the fall season because there's been confirmed two returning characters to come back in the fall season. 
I'm hoping for Krista and Lily because there are, there are two major characters from the first season and we didn't get that much of Krista in season two so we we need to get her back man and Lily I want to see Lily that I, I've been saying this for quite a bit and just imagine Lily seeing Clementine like how much she's grown like because the last thing she because remember the last time that Lily saw Clem she just saw her as this little girl that Lee just needed to take care of and now, that she, and now that when she finds out that he's no longer there Kenny's gone everybody's gone Clem's there it's it's gonna blow her damn mind. She's gonna lose her shit, but in in a have in a happy way because she'll be relieved to see someone that she remembers from back then. You know, like come on. I don't care if you gotta get a different voice actress. I mean, I mean, it's been like over. It's basically been like a decade since the events of season one at this point. So getting a new voice actress for for Lily for at this point in time would kind of make sense as you know again it's been a dead decade I mean I'm pretty sure her voice wouldn't be that different but at least but it would make sense you know because she's you know ten years older man so yeah I just come on bring Lily back would be a, an amazing point and it would make things really interesting all that good stuff. Another another possibility for a major character coming back is Jones slash Clint. The reason why I say that is because they are they they never got any resolution by the end by episode five of season uh, three and and you get, and basically whatever choice you chose in episode four it resulted to one of them dying and they would probably come and depending on what happened they were they're more likely going to come that one of them is going to be coming back. To be a villain, and I feel like that one of the one of the major characters are going to be coming back, one of the returning characters. Like I feel like I feel like I'm just talking about characters in general, not a, not anything spe specific. Like I say, a major character that's like on our side or something. I feel like that they're probably talking about e either Jones slash Clamps. I feel like that that uh, choice is going to come in to the point where it's going to affect like half the the season. The, the season. Because you know we gotta have that one point, have this one villain, and there's supposed to be this big, uh, 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 there's supposed to be this group that you're supposed to fight, especially in at episode one. So I'm really curious how it's gonna go down, guys. I, I really am. So Joan slash Clint, that's more likely the possibility of one of the returning char characters, because one of them can can die in the season three, and the other can be transferred as the main villain in season four. I think that'd be one hell of a compromise if you ask me. And again, would make season three not pointless. Cause, come on, I mean, at least bring one of those two back as one of the main villains. It would make a lot, 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 lot of damn sense if you ask me. And like I said, the four hundred days characters, especially, uh, like, come on, like, bring in my boy Vince back. I mean, for just a brief cameo, like, come on. <laughs> But for all reals here, like, here's the thing. Eddie from 400 Days was supposed to be important to Season 2, Episode 4. It, 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 it was pretty obvious because he got the, out of all the silhouettes from Episode 4's thumbnail, we got literally nothing like that at all. It was not that dark as it was appearing to be. It was honestly really dis disappointing how, how episode 4 kind of turned turned out, honestly. We didn't get to see Eddie, we didn't get to see any of that stuff. Yeah. So hopefully they do tie things up with the season of 4 stuff, but I honestly don't I honestly don't think they can because they already introduced our main cast of characters. I mean, they already introduced... I mean, they already showed us what the other characters are going to be showing up that are going to be with Clem in episode one of season four. So I don't think they're going to have time to bring in all these characters back or have some sort of resolution to like add some hint on what these characters' fates are because it it's going to be way too much. Unless, like I said, the episodes are going to be a bit more longer than than, than usual because that's why I think they're doing four episodes. I, I just feel like they're going to. 
honestly, um, then, then there's Mike and uh, Arvo. I mean, when you really get down to it, Bonnie was Bonnie's a deterrent character, so she's more likely dead by this point. Um, and there's a uh, Mike who was originally supposed to die in season two. Because if you play the PS3 version and you literally played it on the day it came out, lots of PS3 owners of The Walking Dead Season 2, they were like, yo, we can kill Mike? Oh, boom! <laughs> you can only kill his ass until Telltale patched that. Why did they patch that? Probably because he's coming back. I, I don't know. It may Maybe by the first two e episodes for what they got planned, it's two returning characters and... By the second half of season season four, we're getting uh, other returning characters. Cause that's, that's probably gonna be the case by the by the because by because at this point, episodes one and two are probably more likely all pretty much done at this point. So we're probably gonna get two returning characters from episode one alone probably. Hell of I know. That's the reason. So that's when I said resolution or wrapping things up and all, all, all this stuff. I mean that when it comes to re returning characters and stuff. And give us more flashbacks like, I don't know, Clem missing Leap. Because, you know, he's a big part of the whole franchise in general. But, like I like I was saying, like, we got to get, like, like I said, it has to be, like, by the first episode we're going to get two returning characters. Because episode one's pretty much done already. So they're more likely to work on episode two at this point. Probably almost done with that. Just trying to get that pub published right now, probably. Uh, but they're still working on it more, more than likely at this point. Then we're probably gonna have more and more returning characters as we as we go along. More than likely in the second half of season season four. I'm hoping that's the case because because if you just get two returning characters, like like I said, just by episode one alone, come on. Second half, more returning characters on. Yeah, like come on, like that's gotta make some sense because, again, it's the final season. Wrap shit up. So that's basically what I have to say uh, when it comes to returning characters and what I have to say about choices. Well, choices. I'm hoping that at least the major ones have one hell of an impact, especially on your relationships and everything with the characters, because. Here's the thing, in The Walking Dead, the, uh, A New Frontier, by the end of Season 3, you've got to, um, where all your choices from all these characters uh, made these characters like, oh, because of your choices with this and that, and made, made this character like, uh, how much they liked you, what they like, what do they think about you, and they even did the one, one big one with Clem at the end, which was pretty neat, and they did, and they did go through that the relationship status a bit more so it can be like, oh my god, I really want Gordon to like me, but I don't know what the hell to do. And Batman the Enemy Within, because at the end of each episode, you uh, see everyone's, uh, you know, thoughts and like because of your the, the decisions and what you said and everything, kind of make you like, oh shit, maybe in the next episode I should be a bit more careful what I say to this character. Shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? They, they're more likely going to be doing that. I'm expecting for that like, relationship freaking uh, thing in freaking um, uh, in the final season. I expect that because it worked so well in Batman and the Enemy Within. They need to put it in, 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 in this one. Like, especially on their biggest franchise that they got right now, The Walking Dead. And since now that it's ending, come on. They gotta do it to make us be like, oh my god, They're like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, give us that. Like I said, the uh, the episode's length. I expect this these episodes to be longer than usual, especially the finale. I expect the finale to be longer, uh, like uh, The Walking Dead uh, season two, episode five. That was that episode was. Pretty long, like it was. It was pretty long, longer than any of the episodes from season two, honestly. Uh, then uh, Batman: The Enemy Within. I gotta bring that shit up again. Episode five of that, depending on what you chose at the end of episode four. Like, should I like? Should I tell John like, oh, 
you're not lying and he's lying, whatever you chose, chose like which Joker you get by episode 5. If you, if you combine those playthroughs to, together, that that's like three hours worth of content easily, which is crazy. So I'm hoping for something like that in in the final season, at least like that long. You know, it's the final episode. Leave off with a freaking bang, with a good amount, of, like a good good chunk amount of content, all that stuff. Like we need that. And I'm really am hoping that our choices with all these other characters should matter. At least the major choices, a anyway. The ones that we're like, oh my god, why should I choose this guy or this guy? Oh, since Telltale is very capable of making different scenes. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah they, they have, they have in the past. But also making different scenarios, like two different a a episodes, thanks to Batman and the Enemy of Thin. I'm, I'm expecting some, some like that, but I don't know because again they're all worked on different pe people and different teams down there more likely so I don't really I don't really want expected that much but I still want to expect the same amount of content I got at the end of like by the by the time I finished the enemy within because the enemy the Batman the enemy within was an amazing gem it was better than season one easily if the final season does end up being better than season one, that's going to be one hell of a gem right there. Because they know that, yeah. So I do have a lot of expectations for the final season because The Walking Dead by Telltale, like for five years that I've invested myself in, in, in this franchise since 2013, I've been just mind blown by Telltale in general. They they took directions that I really was interested in like mostly cuz you know for the most part but some doesn't really go that well like I said some episodes I was like okay why'd you do this you could have just left this character alone okay cuz like I said there are some directions from Telltale and The Walking Dead that I was like what the hell were they going with this like the fact that they killed Carver halfway through the season when they built him up and they did show him in episode 2 and episode 3 he was kind of a cool villain and I was like yo I kind of want to see his conflict with Clementine more but it's just by the time they killed Carver it's like they didn't know where the hell they were going until like by the end of episode 4 when they're like hey we need to get to Wellington like seriously, like they didn't know where to go after they killed him. So I feel like that in episode four they should have resolved that conflict. Then went to Will Wellington in the end of episode four. Then continued to add on to in episode five. That's honestly how I felt like it should have been written that way. As episode four was definitely shown to be like it was going to be pretty damn dark. So, but it wasn't. It was honestly really disappointing if you ask me. <laughs> Especially what they did to my boy, Nick. Oh my god. The Walking Dead, the final C season, I have a lot of expectations. Like, like, like I said about that. I just, I'm just hoping for this to be good. I am. And Clementine, I hope her story gets resoluted. I hope we get a lot more of uh, characters, you know, laying to them. Oh my god, like these characters are cool, all that good shit. Some returning characters, like more than the two, because I feel like that they were saying like, "Oh, we got some new characters." Uh, again, some returning, some, some returning characters, uh, two of them. But for what we got so far, so you might see some more. Probably, I'm hoping for that because again, final season wrap shit up, all that, all that good stuff. I really do hope so. Again, you know, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end this, uh, end this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it though. Uh, for the Walking Dead final season, I am gonna be playing the demo that comes out. I because it just came out. I'm like, yo, I cannot wait to play this shit. <laughs> yeah, y'all, yeah, y'all know I'm pretty stoked. I hope you guys enjoyed it though. Like the video, if y'all enjoyed, subscribe. If y'all want to see more, comment below what y'all think. And if y'all new to the channel, if y'all want to see more, be sure to subscribe for more. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see y'all in episode of. Uh, and, at, and some episode down the road with someone else. I do have a 
bit of an important announcement in terms of a story I was I've been kind of working on and which is inter interdimensional by the way and let's say I'm kind of working on another story to work on my writing as a test of that to see like oh what people people liked about how I wrote this one story and how I implement that or some like that how I could use that writing or something like that in interdimensional because I'm kind of because again I have no idea how the hell I'm gonna start that series I'm on because you gotta have a good first impression I'm just I just don't know what the hell to do anyway I hope you guys enjoyed it though and uh, I'll see y'all in the next video survivor out